Super Sports Pack. Hi, I'm Phil Esposito. When I'm in Windsor, I watch Dom at the Sports Pack. You should too. Jalako's convert is good. With 14 minutes and 50 seconds left in the first quarter, it's a Mississauga Warrior 7, Essex Ravens. No score. Oh, so you want to make sure that you put your other hand over it, and it didn't look like Kenny had both hands on the ball when he got stripped. And Ross, while uh, Mississauga gets set to kick off again, uh, do you have any keys to the game for today? Well, I was going to say no turnovers on the part of either team. <laughs> we had talked about that before. Yes, we did. But I we? guess I'd have to say, as far as the Ravens go, no more turnovers. No, yeah. Because that's that's too easy. Uh, I don't know how much time. has got 10 seconds off the clock. Yep. And Mississauga's up 7 nothing. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, that that's, that's just a tough break for the Ravens, but... They've been bouncing back all year, so it's nothing new for them. Chalakos for Mississauga will line it up at his own 45 for the kickoff. As his extra point was good. So it is 7-0. We are only 10 seconds into this ball game. And Chalakos with a low line drive kick. Sawyer is going to try and redeem himself as he gets it at the 6-yard line. Cutting up the middle. He's got both hands on the ball as he gets out to the... 30-yard line before being brought down by number 26, Tyrone Francois. So the Ravens will start at their own 24, or pardon me, 29 and a half yard line. Kenny Sawyer had both hands on the ball when the Warriors were still 20 to 30 yards from him. He wasn't taking any chances that time. I think he caught it with both hands and left him there, which is smart. And I, I Kenny will bounce back. He's that type of kid. So first down for the Ravens at their own 29-yard line. The ball to Daryl Townsend. Townsend with a nice rush as he goes up the middle and rushes for eight yards. A good pickup right off the bat by Daryl Townsend. Well, that's another key to the game for the Ravens. They want to establish the run. They want to pound the game because that's pound the ball because that's their game. And they're expecting Mississauga to put a lot of guys in the box and challenge them but they feel with their offensive line, they can rise to the challenge. Second down and two from their own 43-yard line, or pardon me, 38-yard line, and right back up the middle is Townsend across midfield down to the 51-yard line of Mississauga. A great run by Darrell Townsend as that was good for 21 yards. Well, that's tremendous surge by the offensive line. Morano just, uh, Marco Morano just flew off the ball, and so did Andrew Blanco on that play. And 
they're just they're just trying to uh, send a message right now to the uh, the Warriors. First and ten from the 51 yard line of Mississauga. And Townsend gets it again. This time he only gets about three on the play, so that'll bring up a second down and seven with 13.20 to go here in the opening quarter. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the game plan for the Ravens is today, Rick. I know they do want to pound it inside, but they also want to give some different looks to the Warriors, looks that they're probably not prepared for. But, of course, the Warriors will want to do the same thing to the Ravens. Exactly. Ricky Simons up behind center, hands it off. And Townsend again punches it up. Or, pardon me, Sergio Simmons, number 33, with his first carry. As he picked up, uh, we'll say about four on the play. It'll be third down and four, shall we say. I think Mike Hawkshaw was introduced as the starting quarterback, but it's Ricky Simons at the controls right now. Yeah. So third down, and we'll call it a long four. And right back up the middle, and a good surge there by the defensive line. I think they're a little short. I think so too, Ross. As the Warriors number... 99, Sean Meredith led the charge. And there looks like they're going to go to yard. Looks like they're going for it. Yeah, fourth down and a yard. Be interesting to see if it's a handoff or it's a touch and go. And by touch and go, I mean the quarterback just comes up, slaps the, uh, the rear of the center, and just goes. In Canadian football, when they're a yard off the ball, quite often that's the best way to look at it. That's what it is. It's a touch and go, and it looks like they might have the first down. Yeah, they did get across the 40 by the looks of it. The uh, officials are spotting it on across the 40-yard line. So gain of two yards on the play, so definitely a first down. Good call, Coach. Well, I just happen to know Glenn Mills fairly well, <laughs> exactly. and his temperament is, hey, if, if it's in their end of the field, let's send a message. I don't think he would have done that if he had been on his own side of the of center field. No. And, of course, the Ravens, it is a um, actually a right-to-left uh, wind on the field. The flag not standing straight out, but it is a uh, good good breeze out there, so it's, it's, the Ravens aren't really going headlong into the wind. It's kind of a cross breeze. Well, the Ravens are moving left to right, and like you said, they're going into a little bit of a wind, and that could have factored into Coach Mills' decision. He wasn't happy with Moit Bushian's kit punting last week against Steel City. Yes. And... So he thought, hey, let's let's roll the dice and, and keep the ball on the ground. Second down and eight now for the Ravens. And we'll have to see as Sergio Simmons has took the handoff, but uh, a lot of people uh, it's going no, to be third down. Somebody yelled fumble. I know that. So just a two-yard pickup. So third down and six. Ball on the 36-yard line for the of the Warriors. Ten twenty to go here in the opening quarter. Seven nothing Warriors. And Daryl Townsend has nowhere to run, so that'll bring up another fourth down. As Daryl tried to cut it back up the middle. Gets it to the 39-yard line. Fourth down and four, two-yard pickup. Uh, Boshian's in there. That means they're going to punt the ball. One thing that I, I think the Ravens probably have been working on a little bit, Kenny Sawyer's doing a remarkably good job centering the ball. Tiny as he is, Boshian is going to want to get the ball away more quickly. They're pulling the two wing guys, the gunners, in tight because Mississauga is going to come. Yeah, and they are. Boshin gets it away. It's a wobbler, but the uh, Warriors let it bounce, and it's picked up there by number 35. That's McIsaac, and a late flag that's thrown 30 feet into the air by the official. <laughs> Boy, he launched that one. Boy, he sure did. <laughs> Five-yard return. 
by McIsaac. So we'll wait and see what the penalty call is. And it I, looks like they're talking to the Ravens, but I'm not sure right now what the call is. Yeah. Oh, the Warriors are backing up, Ross. Rough play. So that will really back them up. Half the distance to the goal line. That'll put them on the six-yard line. You may hear in the background the sterling tones of Brian Vickerman, who's doing the PA here today. Good friend of the OVFL, a good guy. Hand off inside. Gain of about four on the carry. I believe that was number 33, Jerome Hofferden. Hofferden's their go-to back, and he is a fine running back. So gain of five. It'll be second down and five from their own 11-yard line. Quarterback is Dave Hamilton. And Hoffernan, depending on the spot, will be very close to a Warriors first down. So third and a yard. Just shy. Eight and a half to go here in the opening quarter. Seven nothing Warriors. Hamilton hands the ball off. It's going to be close, Rick. Yeah, it is. Oh, they're calling it a first down. As they picked up a, uh, just a yard. So first down for the Warriors. Ball on their own 22-yard line. Offered in again, and this time he's stuffed right away as he got back to the line of scrimmage. That was Bernacki leading the way on the tackle for the Ravens. Tom Bernacki, who's a student at Memphis University, really wants this. This is his last game as a Raven, and he certainly would like to go out with a championship. Yeah, as well, uh, Marco Morano, his last game as a Raven. Well, I think Marco Morano and Boshin and Iverson and Billy Cox are probably going to be joining the Fratman, the AKO Fratman, after this game. And off to Hofferden again. Actually, that was number 26, Tyrone Francois, oh, yeah. on the uh, on the carry. It'll bring up a third down and three. Well, Hofferton's their main back, just as Townsend's the go-to guy for Essex, but they they do have to give it to somebody else once in a while. Yeah, Francois and Hofferton are in the backfield. And Hofferton gets the call this time, bounces it out to the outside. And is wrapped up neatly with a leg tackle by number 24 of the Ravens, Pat Zeter. But not before another Warrior first down. Coaches don't like to see their defensive backs making a lot of tackles in a game because if they do, if they are, that means the running backs are getting into the secondary. And that usually is, as a result, they have good yardage. First down. Offerton's got some room getting to the outside. Does a little stutter step and is finally brought down by number 37, Neil Galbraith. But not before a 44-yard gain by Hofferton, and it brings it all the way down to the 34-yard line of the Ravens. Well, that was a great run, but one of the things the Ravens are going to have to do is keep their heads on a swivel when they're bringing pressure like that, and they can't let the running backs get by them. You've got to have good vision. A running, one of the prime requisites for a good running back is good vision. Also, outside linebackers have to have great vision as well.
And the pitch in the backfield and tackled by number 19, Cody Bottero was number 26, Ty- Tyrone Francois, as they faked the handoff to Hofford in and gave it to Francois, but uh, didn't fool the Ravens in a loss of five on the play. Well, that was played very well by number 71, Nick Skeets, for the Ravens. And he slowed him up, but it's a good thing that he had help because all he did was slow him up, and he could have still maintained his his uh, leverage and made, picked up some yards. So second down and 15. And this time, Hofferton is stuffed on a uh, botched handoff there. Getting in through the line was number 67, Christian Meyer. But we have a flag on the play. And it's going to be offside against Essex. So that will wipe out the uh, yardage loss. Well, that's why he got in so quick, maybe. One of the things that coaches work on day after day after day with the defensive line, watch the ball. Watch the ball. If the ball moves, you do. If the ball doesn't move, because... Well-coached teams like Mississauga are going to take advantage of hard counts or stutter counts and draw teams offside. Yeah. So second down and 10. Offered it up the middle and is finally brought down by number 67 of the Ravens, Christian Meyer. And that'll bring up a third down and five with 4.45 to go here in the opening quarter. The Warriors threatening to put more points on the board. They already lead it 7 nothing, on a fumble recovery on the opening kickoff of the ball game. Big play for the Ravens right here. Yeah, they need they need to stop, definitely. And they got it. As this time it was number 30. Julius Ajay, and he's dropped for a loss. So that'll bring up a fourth down, and the ball will be spotted on the 31-and-a-half yard line of the Ravens. Be about a 39-yard field goal attempt. So in the kick is Dean Chalakos. So and that's where they're going to spot it at the 39, right on the hash mark. High snap. And does that have enough? Yes, it does. And it's through. So a 30 and a late, late flag down. So Chalakos with a 39 yard field goal makes it 10 0, uh, depending on this flag. But I, I think it happened after the play. Objectionable against the uh, Warriors. Yep. The Warriors. I assume the Ravens are going to get the ball out close to the 50. Because this was tacked on. They probably would have taken the ball at the 35. And with the tack on, the add-on, should put them close to the 50 if it happened after the play. An objectionable conduct is usually an add-on. Yeah, the play will stand, and the uh, they'll uh, spot the ball on the 45. Appreciate the help of our spotter, John Edwards, for that one. So 10 nothing with 3.56 to go here in the first quarter. The Warriors off to a quick start here against the Ravens. Actually, the Ravens, the last drive, put a decent drive together, just uh, came up short as the uh, Warrior defense stood up tough in their own zone. And no gain this time for Townsend. Quite officiating crew for this game. The referees, Keith Buchanan out of Oshawa, and the umpires, Brian Taylor out of Toronto. Head linesman Sean O'Sullivan out of Toronto, and the line judge is Murray Morlog out of Lakeshore. And we'll pick it up in a few few seconds. Well, it was a uh, two-yard gain, actually, by Townsend. 
as the forward progress got him two yards, and we'll get him another two yards. Bring up third and six. Back umpires Ross Foxcroft out of Toronto. Kevin Mickleborough is the back judge. He's out of Hamilton, and he's working in the CFL as well, as, and as is Foxcroft. The rest are all working in the OUA. Good group. Well, I, I hope the Ravens develop a little bit of variety in their approach. And Simons is going to go down on the fake pitch by a swarm of tacklers. There were four red jerseys on top of the one teal jersey of Ricky Simons. And uh, that's going to force Boshian in to punt the ball away. It looked to me like it was not a fake, although it turned out to be. Townsend just got too far out in front, so he couldn't take the toss. And Simons was surprised, pulled the ball back in wisely. Yes. And got what he could, which wasn't much. So Boshian back at his own 30. And it looks like Mr. Saga is going to bring the house again. Boshian angles it for the sideline. And that's going to go out, see where they spot it. They're going to spot it about the 53-yard line or more. No, actually, the 53 of Essex. So a, a favorable spot. Which is pretty close to where it, uh, where it went out at. 154, only a 10-yard punt. Net yard. For Boshian on that one. 152 and counting here in the opening quarter. 10 nothing in favor of the Warriors. And they are across midfield to start this drive. They scored on their first drive. A three-point field goal. Offered in. Will gain a yard. Maybe two where they spot his forward progress at. Meyer in on the tackle for the Ravens. <laughs> it would appear to be at this point that we don't have two passing quarterbacks in this game. No, and it surprised me because uh, I believe the Warriors passing this year was over 1,000 yards. But it, you're right, they haven't, you know, unless they're uh, going to see what Hofferton does, and Hofferton just got plowed by number 24, Zeter, as he came in and uh, nailed Hofford in. It's a good thing that he did, though, because the Ravens didn't wrap him. They had him. They didn't wrap him, and then when Zeter put the finishing touches on it, um, I think Hofford was aware that, well aware that he was there. Yes. Well, Hofford was dragging a couple of Ravens with him. And actually uh, it picked up a, a couple yards on it. Now Hamilton is back to pass. Oh, wide open on the far sideline. And down to the 22-yard line of the Ravens is number two, Jeffrey Charlton. And I'll tell you, somebody missed an assignment for him to be that wide open, Ross. There wasn't a teal jersey anywhere. That's a 28-yard no. gain. Nobody. I don't know how. And it looked like. Pat Zeter was pressing on the far side. He just he just let him go, and the safety did not ro who was Iverson because they just had a free in the middle of the field on that one. Did not rotate over. Certainly not in time. Offered and bounces it to the outside, but gets nowhere. As leading the tacklers again is Christian Meyer. As the first quarter siren sounds. The, well, it hasn't been the Ravens' quarter by any stretch of the imagination. No, it hasn't. But it's been a fast quarter, Rick, when you have two teams that are pretty well running all the time. It's going to be a quick game. It has, yeah, it will. And from the way it's going, too far too quick for the Ravens. Yeah, the, uh, you're right. The Warriors threatening to score again. So the teams will change ends. The Ravens will be going from our right to left. They're wearing their teals today. War 
Warriors in fire engine red. There's no mistaking the Warriors out there, I'll tell you. Red and white. Throw the ball on the Raven 22. The Warriors threatening to score again. Hamilton rolls out to the far side of the field. Now he cuts it up. He's going to run it himself and wisely gets out of bounds. As I'll tell you, he had a couple Ravens down there. Led by number 19, Cody Botterill, that we're waiting for him to put the lick on him. And that'll bring up a third down and three. The ball spotted on the 15-yard line of the Ravens. Nick Skeets was coming on an inside-out route, and uh, the quarterback got outside of him, and as a result, picked up good yardage on the play. Hamilton did a real good job getting away from Skeets. And the pitch is back to Hofferton, and Hofferton bounces it back towards the inside and gets down to the four-yard line. Finally brought down by number 42, Eric Schrank, but Ross, he should have been caught behind the line of scrimmage. Instead, it's an 11-yard gain and Combert a first down. Combert Ackie had him, spun him around, but he did a, but Hoffer did, did what you tell every running back to do. Keep your legs pumping. Yep. Keep those legs churning. He broke out of the grasp of Bernacki and picked up great yardage of first down, and they're ready to move into the end zone again. Yeah. Ball on the three-yard line of the Ravens. 14-10 to go here in the half as we are early here in the first minute of the second quarter. It's already 10-0 in favor of Mississauga. And Hofferton going inside is stopped by a host of Raven tacklers just shy of the goal line. Mississauga had a strong look. They had their fullback. They had, it was like a twin fullback set from a one-off set. So they had two lead blockers. It was like a double iso almost. And Hofferton just followed up right into the middle and picked up a couple of yards on the play. And they keep doing that. They'll be at the back of the end zone. Yep. Second and goal from the one. Hamilton to Hofferton, and he still doesn't get in. Stopped at the one-yard line. Well, I would guess... If it comes down to it, I think Mississauga is going to take a timeout. Oh, Allie Berry on the tackle. Yeah, we've got a Raven down on the field. I believe it's Cassette. Chad Cassette out of Brennan. Yep, that's who it is, number 99, Chad Cassette. And uh, the Ravens can't afford to lose him. Actually, can't afford to lose anybody on the defensive line. Well, Chad's missed two or three games already this year. A result of injury he suffered. But Mickey Tullett's out checking him out. Yep. And I think... Uh, well, he's had a foot problem or ankle problem uh, earlier on. It looks like Mickey's trying to... He's flexing his knee. Well, Coach Mills and Coach Malarnik are standing very closely together trying to come up with something that's going to work for them. Well, from our viewpoint up here, Ross, uh, through the binoculars, it's uh, either a knee or a thigh. I'm not sure. Is Mickey, Mickey was high up on the leg. What? Cassette is up. And he's flexing his left leg. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe he got a Charlie horse, Ross. It didn't, uh, doesn't look like he's favoring the knee at all. But he's definitely having tr trouble putting weight on that leg. He's walking on it very gingerly right now. Yes, he is. I'll be surprised if you see Cassette back very soon, if at all. So a 13-12 to go here in the first half. It is third down and goal from the one. The Warriors already up 10 nothing, threatening to put more points on the board. Hamilton up under center, hands the ball off, and Hofferton scampers in from the one, barely touched at all, to make it 16 nothing in favor of the Mississauga Warriors. A one-yard touchdown run 
by Hofferden. Just off tackle, very simple play, right off tackle. Didn't look like there was a lead block, but a good surge by the Mississauga line and uh, knocked the Ravens back into the end zone, and Hofferden just followed the Ravens back into the end zone. And flags all over the place as the extra point was good by Chilakos. So we'll see what the call here is. It looked like the Ravens jumped. And if if it is, it'll be added on the uh, kickoff. Well, they're still discussing it, but I think you're right, Ross. That's, uh, that's what's going to be the call. And that's what goes up on the board, the extra point, to make it 17 nothing, with 13.07 to go. That drive for the Warriors, 10 plays, 53 yards, and took up only 3.35 off the clock. Well, it's a long way to come from behind, and the Ravens have, have got to get their offense on track, put some points on the board. Well, the uh, Warriors, uh, they have to be thinking about two years ago at Iverwind Stadium, Ross, when the Ravens beat them in the championship game on that uh, botched extra point. That gave Essex the, the victory, 14-13. I know it'll be weighing on my mind. Well, the Ravens, and that's going to be a loose ball off the kickoff. They let it bounce, and it bounced back towards the Warriors. Cardinal sin. Yes. Never let the ball bounce. If it's in front of you, grab it. Forget the guys coming up. If it's over your head, the guy behind you gets it. If it's in front of you, as much as that was by five or six yards, get the ball because they're coming down and they're on side. And luckily for the Ravens, they did recover. So I'm they'll... amazed because nobody hustled to the ball. No, it, just, it was almost like I got it, no, you take it type of play. And, uh Wow. Tell you, the Ravens are lucky. They'll start at their own 31-yard line. Back to Townsend. Townsend bounces it to the outside. He's got a guy on his back, though. I'll tell you. He rode Chris Paris for 11 yards on his back. A good run by Daryl Townsend. And he picked up the first down. That was an outstanding run by Townsend. Well, it almost looked like Paris was on a riding piggyback there on Townsend. Well, this is what the Ravens need to do. They need to, need to put some plays like that together. It's going to be tough consistently, though. Yes. Nine guys in the box, and if there are nine guys in the box, and they've got a free, they've got one guy in the middle of the field, maybe they're going to try and roll Ricky out. Get him deep. Yeah. Townsend will lose a yard on that play as Greg McIsaac I think, I got think, in there in a hurry. I think one of the things that helped the Mississauga run game, Rick, was extending the field vertically when they threw deep and they caught the Ravens flat-footed. Yeah, that, that's what put them down. I, They've got know. a three-deep coverage only. They're, they can go with that. Well, Simon's back to pass. He's got a man open, and it's caught. Out to midfield by number 35, the tight end, Kane Coulter. That was a beautifully conceived and equally well-executed play. And that's a 12-yard gain. And more importantly, another first down. Oh, they're going to spot it at the 54-yard line of the Ravens. But that, that'll do two things. It'll give the Ravens some confidence with their throwing game. Secondly... It's going to loosen up the defense on the part of Mississauga. They're going to take some guys out of the box if the Ravens can consistently do that. Yep. So first and ten. And on the option, around on the outside, Daryl Townsend, a six-yard gain. I think the Ravens coaching staff has adjusted very well to the defense that Mississauga is giving them. And now they're going outside. They're throwing the ball. They're going to go outside. Then they can come back inside and have success. And, of course, with Darrell Townsend, 
you can always count on having some success. Yeah. Well, they got uh, three in the backfield, and they're all pulling. And a fumble on a bad handoff exchange as Ricky Simons hit the hip of Daryl Townsend, and that will drop him back three yards. That's not the fault of the running back in most cases. Ricky Simons has got to get out there in a hurry. Daryl probably, because he's watching the defense, probably flattened his, his route just a little bit. And as a result, that meant that he didn't cut it in. Ricky's got to get out there to make sure that the connection is made. Yeah, it, it looked like uh, Ricky dropped back instead of angled with, because everybody was pulling. All three in the backfield were pulling uh, to the near side towards us. Good point. Townsend up the middle, and he is stuffed right away by number 55, Shane Smith. And that'll be a no gain at all, or if anything, maybe a foot. And that'll bring up a fourth down and long. And a good decision to, to punt the ball out of there. But Mississauga has shown that they're going to come after it because they know Boshin takes a long time to get rid of it. And he does. You're right. He does. He's calling his, his gunners in tight for added blocking support. I, and Boshin gets a good one away as it goes over the head and off the hands of Najai Coley. Coley going back towards his own end zone. Oh, and a big hit at the 10-yard line there by Nick Skeet, number 71. As Coley probably thought he ran into a wall. He did. Yes. The wall has a name, Skeets. But that was very well covered by the Ravens, just what they wanted. Poor position, field position for the Mississauga Warriors. Now it's up to the Ravens' defense to hold them, get the ball back. The Ravens desperately need a score before the half. Yeah, and we are 9-20 away from the half. Hamilton hands the ball off, Hoffernan. Cuts it just a little to the outside and gains maybe three on the play. So this drive starting on the 11. And that's what he got, three. So he'll mark it out at the 14-yard line. Second down and seven now for the Mississauga Warriors. Hamilton takes the snap. The pitch is back to Hofford in, and he tried to cut it up the middle, but the Ravens did a great job there on closing up that hole, Ross, because I could see what Hofford in saw when he first got the ball, too. It's a good point. He was going to make a cutback. It was suddenly filled very quickly, and the Ravens were very good, very very alert not to over-pursue. Yeah, I believe that was number 90, Nadell Muhammad, that closed the gap. That'll bring up a third and seven. Hamilton rolling out, passes incomplete. Good defensive play by the Ravens' Pat Zeter, number 24, as he timed the leap perfectly and made contact with the intended receiver, which was number 80, Darcy Brown, at the same time the ball got there, and a good no call by the officials. A great piece of officiating. It was timed perfectly by Zeter. And no call, good call. Yep, so Chalakos, from his own one-yard line, will have to punt the ball away. I think they're short a player. And a bounce. The snap is bounced. It's a low punt taken by R Sawyer, Kenny Sawyer. I don't know why he's going to call him Ricky Sawyer. <laughs> but Kenny got about nine on the return as he gets out to the uh, up to the 41-yard line of the Warriors. He ran into actually Nick Skeets. He did, he did, and that and slowed Nick him down. And Nick was trying to put a put a block on, and he actually blocked uh, Sawyer. So a 30-yard, th pardon me, a 34-yard punt by Chalakos, a nine-yard return by Sawyer, and that all coming with seven and a half to go here in the first half. The Ravens desperately need to put something on the board here, Ross. They're down 17 to nothing. 
Well, they're in good field position. Yes, they are. And off to Townsend, tries to go up the middle, but can't. As number 46. Or no, pardon me, that was number 43. Marcus Doolin grabbed him around the ankles, but Townsend fell forward for a two-yard gain. Boy, I'll tell you, both defenses are doing a good job of swarming to the ball. The Ravens have just got to do a little bit better job of wrapping the Mississauga tail or running backs. Simons rolls out to his right, looking downfield. Airs one out. And incomplete as both players down the other end went up for the ball at the same time and deflected off their hands as that was intended for Stefan Smith, number 80. Or no, pardon me, 22, David Ford. Number 11, Terry, Terry uh, Champ did a great job of pass defense on that one. And another good no call by the refs. Yep, they both went up for the ball. Yeah, both went up for the ball. Yep. Great job. Six twenty to go here in the opening half. Townsend cutting it back up towards the middle. Made a couple cuts, and uh, he's going to be short of the first down. It'll be a six-yard gain. I don't think Coach Mills is going to punt. I think he's either going to field goal, or he's going to. Uh, Go for it. Looks like he's sending on. Well, looks like he's sending on the punt unit. No, Kalala. Oh, Kalala is coming up. Yeah. I'll tell you, Kalala has a good leg, and he's got the wind behind him. So it, it's, it's definitely doable for uh, Joe Kalala, as we've seen him kick. The 40-yard kick. 40 yards. They're going to mark it at the 40-yard line. Well, it's definitely uh, it is doable. Like I say, it's not a really, and the wind has picked up for Kalala. A little bit of a high snap. Oh, he drills it into the line. As that kick didn't even go a foot off the ground. It was a high snap. I don't know, maybe that threw his timing off, but... Uh, the snap wasn't that bad. No, I just, it was... I'm, he may have lifted his head up too soon. It looked like he took his eyes off the ball, and yeah. he just missed it. I think he got more of the uh, holder's hand than he did the ball <laughs> on that one. Yeah, Cole not may be holding his hand as he runs off the field. Well, that's a wasted opportunity for the Ravens, and they can't afford those, not with the score the way it is. No. Hofford in. Goes right up the middle and gains seven. Brought down by Nico Schwieck. So we'll call it second down and five. Ball on their own 45-yard line. Well, the uh, offered in. Going outside and then breaks it up. And he's going to be very close to a first down. But I'll, t- I'll tell you, Ross, that uh, in this first half here, I, um, I don't think I want to be in the Ravens locker room at, at the halftime because the uh, I'm not knocking the Ravens at all by any means. But, you know, it, it's 17 nothing, and, and uh, the Warriors have pretty much done what they've wanted this first half. Well, I think it's, it's as much the fact that the Ravens just haven't tackled well. And it is and a first down. Sorry, Ross. Hofferton is really just keeping those legs going, and he's picking, he's spinning and twisting and turning and picking up extra yards. And the offensive line for the Warriors is coming off the ball a little sharper than Essex. Yeah, Hamilton's back to pass. He's got a man downfield. Oh, and that's going to be out of bounds. Good call by the officials as it was caught by Charlton, number two, but he caught it. A good step and a half out of bounds. There was no question on that. Well, that was a fade, and it was just an attempt again to extend the field vertically, and the Warriors are doing a much better job of that right now than is Essex. They lull them in, they lull them in, and he was wide open. He was. He had two steps on uh, the defender's eater. 
And uh, Pat's usually uh, usually covers a little bit better than that, but he's been burned a couple times. As Hofford in scampers for a gain of about eight. So that'll bring up a third down and well, seven-yard gain uh, on the spot. So third down and three just across midfield. 3.50 to go here in the second quarter. And Ross, uh, Hofton has on 20 carries 113 yards here in the first half. He's earned a lot of that himself, but the Ravens have helped as well. Yes. And a fumble on the snap, so Hamilton will keep it. And the surge forward, depending on the spot by the official, but he's going to be close to a first down. So definitely at least two-yard gain. We'll see where they spot the ball, and that's going to be really, really close. I think it's a little short. Yeah, I think so, too, from our uh, our vantage point up here. That's going to bring up fourth down. Well, by the looks of the yard markers, which are across the field from us, it's, uh, it's a good yard. John Samus, the head coach of the Warriors, I don't think is going to take any chance. A lead like this at this time in the game, unless there's some trickery going on, I think he's going to put Essex deep with only three coming down to three minutes in the first, first half. Chilakos back to punt. Are they going to try the... Well, they tried the hard snap, and it didn't work. And Chilakos kicks it out of bounds. Chilakos kicks those out of bounds. First down, that's the Ravens. So the Ravens will have first down, and they're going to spot it on the Raven 27. A 24-yard kick by Chilakos with no return. Rick, at this time, I'd like to uh, give some kudos to the Windsor Spitfires. They provided us with their soundboard for today's game, and we appreciate the help of the Windsor Spitfires. And I know that they're getting ready for the OHL season or thinking about it very shortly, and we wish the Spits every success this year. And thanks again to the Windsor Spitfires organization for uh, allowing us to use the soundboard so we can bring you the game today. And on, on first down, Townsend with the ball. And a good gain by Darrell that time, gaining seven yards on the play. Getting it out to the 35, just shy of his own 35-yard line. 245, though, left here in the first half. And uh, time winding down here. I, I'm sure Coach Mills and the rest of the Ravens coaching staff will definitely want to they got to get something going here. This time the handoff is to Sparides. Sparides gets to the outside. And a good gain by Sparides as he gets up to his own 48-yard line. That's a good call a by 10 the 10-yard gain. Uh, yeah, that's a great call by the uh, offensive uh, coaching staff of the Ravens. Well, Ross, you have an interesting halftime show coming up in uh, just two and a half minutes. Well, we've talking to former sports information director at the University of Windsor, and now a very important person with the OUA, John Bauer. Oh, you just a, made his head swell. A name familiar with everyone in sports in the Windsor area. And Mike Adam, the CEO and commissioner of the OVFL. Townsend up the middle. Gets out across his own 50. Two former Ravens are going to be playing on November Six yard 6th. Game. In, at the University of Michigan in the Big House. It's called the Bash at the Big House, Grand Valley State Lake, Grand Valley State Lakers, and the Michigan Tech Huskies will be playing. And Steve Fantetti and Chad Sandel, two former Ravens, will be playing for Michigan Tech in that game. 2.15 and counting now. As Townsend gets the ball again, tries to bounce it to the outside, but is stopped at the line of scrimmage. So no gain for Townsend. So we'd like you to help break the Division II football attendance record. And if you want to go see the game, you can order tickets at www.mgoblue.com slash ticket office. Come and see former Ravens playing in the big house. Essex calls a timeout here with 
2.06 to go. Ball just shy of their own 51-yard line, and it is third down and four. Well, Ross, are you in two-down territory here? I don't think so, eh? I think you're on the wrong side of the field for it, and boy, you sure can't afford to give up another score. The Ravens haven't done badly no. since the first quarter. No, they yeah, they've uh, they seem to have slowed uh, Hofford and down a little bit, but uh, like I said, they got burnt there on that one big pass, and luckily on the second one that they did get burned on at uh, Charlton, both times were to Charlton. He was out of bounds when he caught the ball, so. Well, Mississauga's got a good game plan going into the day, and they're executing it very well. The Ravens' game plan is very sound, but they're not executing it as well as they would like to do so. So shotgun formation. Simon spins away from a tackler, now makes a cut, tries to get it upfield, and he'll be shy of the first down as uh, he gained maybe about a yard and a half to two yards on the play. But either way, he's definitely going to be a good two yards short of a first down. As wow, big decision for Coach Mills. I I think he's going to punt it out of there and go into the half and not risk giving Mississauga a better field position. And I think that's a sound coaching decision. Yes. Not that Coach Mills will care what either you or I think. Nor should he. Well, at least not what I think anyway. Oh, he doesn't care too much what I think about things either. <laughs> And that's good because he's probably more right than I would be. Yeah. Once again, they're pulling the gunners in tight to block. Low snap. Boshin gets it away. I'd say wobbler and taken. Oh, I'm really surprised on that one there as number one, Andrew James, caught that on his knees. Well, that's a close one. And uh, And he was allowed to get up. The official must have thought that there was, uh, you know, he was ca- in the act of catching it, and that would permit him to proceed with the ball, which he did. Nine yards. Got a nine-yard return out of it. So I, 36-yard punt and a nine-yard return. Coach Mills would like to have seen it blown dead, but I think the official made the right call. You don't have your binoculars or your glasses on. You can't tell from up here. That's a long way down there. I'm, I'm, but it's such a bright, beautiful day here and a great venue. <laughs> it is. That I can see very clearly. Hofford and gets the handoff. Oh, my goodness. And he's carrying four Ravens with him for five yards. They got to tie up his feet. Well, one of the things the Ravens might talk about is tackling them from the hips down rather than around the waist or the shoulders. But Hofford is showing me that he's an outstanding back. He is. He's got great leg drive. But we have two fine backs. I mean, that's not to oh. say anything about Daryl Townsend. He's nope. had a great year, and I think he's had a record-setting year yes. for the OVFL. Second down and five. Offered and going to the outside is brought down by number 44 of the Ravens, Nico Schwieck. That was a look they haven't given us today so far. That was a sweep. And it picked up good yardage. It's going to be very close to a first down. Yeah. Four yards on the play. And they're going to be third and uh, less than a yard as they're at their own 40-yard line with 50 seconds to go here in the half. And this time the sweep doesn't work. And a fumble. Ravens recover. And a break for the Ravens with 38 seconds left here in the in the first half. The Ravens will get the ball at the 37-yard line of the Warriors. We'll see if the Ravens go to a hurry-up look right now because there's very little time left. But very important for the Ravens to get on the scoreboard one way or the other. Yes. The Warriors will call a timeout. 
that's a real good call by the Mississauga coaching staff. Get your defense set. Know exactly what you want them to do. Make sure you got the right number on the field. It also helps the Ravens because they can talk a little bit about what they want to do, and maybe they're going to call two or three plays before they send the team out so they can line up on the ball. We'll see because you don't want to use time in the huddle right. at this point. 17 nothing is our score. 38 seconds left on the clock. And uh, like I say, it's 17 nothing in favor of the Warriors. But the Ravens, well, they, they definitely have time, Ross. 38 seconds really is, is a long time. Well, I shouldn't say a long time, but enough time. It's enough time to put points on the board, and yes. that's exactly what they are going to try to do. Oh, Ricky Simons in the shotgun formation. Townsend the only back. Simons looking deep, and up, tipped up in the air, and almost a circus catch by number 80, Stefan Smith, as there were two Raven players, receivers, and two Warrior defenders. And it tipped off of somebody's hand, and uh, Stefan Smith dove for it, trying to catch it before it hit the ground, but just failed. But something's wrong with that pass route. Two, two receivers are close together. It drew. There were five Mississauga players in the area. Now you can throw a blanket over all four players. Simon's pass is incomplete, just ahead of the intended receiver, David Ford. And I'll tell you, that... That was a nice pass by Simon. Just a little, he led forward a little bit too far. But uh, you know, if, if Dave comes up with that reception, he's in the end zone because he's between the two defenders. Well, Mississauga is playing it over top, playing their two deep guys over top. Actually, one right now. But what's happened? They're walking up a safety here. But um, Simon thought he was going to break it off sooner. Now he's got to roll out to his right, and <laughs> Ricky Simon just hit the yard marker. The guy holding the yard marker on the top of the head and just said everything sprawling. <laughs> Not what we wanted to do, but I think we're going to see, a, boy, this is going to be quite a field goal attempt for Colella. Oh, I'll tell you. This is going to be a long field goal attempt. He's going to kick it from probably the 40, boy, 44-yard line, I think. Yeah, it was just mentioned uh, from Vic down the way here, Ross, that there was a guy in the area, obviously, so it's not intentional grounding because he hit him. <laughs> yeah, he gets this one up in the air, but it's going to be under the crossbar. The Warriors will take it out and only get it to the four, but in the OBFL comes to the 20. Comes to the 20. I hate that rule. I don't like that rule either. I think it's a very bad rule, but... An offensive team marches down the field. They put the guy deep in his end zone. He gets it out to the one. Then he gets to the 20. Doesn't make any sense to me, but I don't make the rules. No. But I would say that's the one we get more complaints about from our the people who respond to our broadcast than any other one rule. I, I know there are other leagues that do it, but I don't agree with that in any league. I think the... Uh, OFC does it, too. I have no idea. No idea why. Yeah, I, I don't... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't... Uh, Good job by Water or by Mississauga. They're just going to take a knee and lead like this. Why, why risk anything? Yeah, five seconds on the clock. They are up 17 to nothing. As the siren on the end clock goes, Hamilton will take the final knee of the first half. And 17-0 uh, is our score at the half in favor of the Mississauga Warriors. The Ravens will definitely have to pick things up in this second half. What we're going to do here from University Stadium on the grounds of Wilfrid Laurier University is take a two-minute timeout, and when we come back, we'll have Ross Pettigrew on our halftime show. We'll be back right after this. Taste is important to this bunch, and for me, the price has to be reasonable, too. 
With a wide variety of fruits and vegetables available year-round, you can always find an affordable option. Eating five to 10 servings of vegetables and fruit a day as part of a healthy diet could reduce your risk of cancer, heart disease, and stroke. Five servings could be a meal with salad, potato, side vegetable, and fruit for dessert. It's that simple. Vegetables and fruits, are you getting enough? Off, off the chest, picks it up at his own 15 yard line. The second half is underway. Sawyer with a nice return, a 15 yard return as he gets it out to the 30 yard line to start this second half. Well, a much better way to start this half than the other half. He, and uh, interesting that Mississauga has kicked off to start both halves. Yeah, that was a 50-yard kick that time by number 16, Dean Chalakos. Well, it was nice talking to both Mike and Brian at or Brian and John Bauer at the half, and uh, good to see John again. Yes, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to talk to John as. Townsend goes up the middle and gets out across the 40-yard line, and that'll be another Ravens first down. As that time, uh, the Raven offensive line opened up a hole for him. Well, the Ravens, just like they started the first half, are moving left to right, and uh, the sticks are on this side of the field, which means Coach Mills and his staff, they're the home team, so the visiting team has them on their side. In the second half, they'll get a quick look at where the ball is spotted. So first and ten, Townsend again. And this time Townsend gets five yards as he gets out to the 45. Actually, that was number 25, Jesse Brown. I apologize for that. That was Jesse Brown with the uh, five-yard carry. Brown is in the lineup, I, I suspect, to give the Ravens a little more speed. They're going with split back and a little bit on offset. Want to get some speed in the backfield. This time it's Townsend. He picks up a couple more on the carry. Number 43 in on the tackle. Marcus Doolin. Well, the Ravens are going to have to strike quickly. They don't want to be this far behind at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Simon's back to pass, drills it, and it's caught. And I'll tell you, what a nice catch by number 83, Mark Curtis, as he was absolutely hammered. It's a 13-yard gain and a first down as... He, he was hit by number 20, Elliot Richardson, immediately upon catching the ball. And, man, it just it threw him back three yards. That's how hard he was hit. Well, that was a great throw by Ricky Simons, right on the money, a great catch by uh, Curtis. But you're right, he took a lick. And we've got a injured Raven down. Looks like it's Allie Morano who's been working at center for the Ravens. And that means Allie Berry is probably going to come in at center. But uh, Mickey Tellett's out there pretty quickly. Allie's worked walking off. Allie's done a real good job for the Ravens this year. He's a solid ball player. Yes, he is. And only 17 years old. So he's got, uh, he's got three more years with this program. Well, his brother Marco has really done wonderfully well in the program and the Ravens are going to miss Mark and wish him well as he joins the frat. Yep. Oh, nice fake inside. And that was number 33 Simmons. And that's good for an eight-yard gain. What made that happen, Rick, was a great job of selling the pass by Ricky Simon. And he did, too. I, I thought he was going to pass it as well. Well, they definitely, Ross, you mentioned it early on. They're, they're going to have to start giving Miss, Mississauga different looks and different, you know, mixing up some plays and whatnot because uh, obviously what they were doing in the first half didn't work. You know, I mean. Uh, that was a great job by the officials. Ricky, yeah. uh, 
Daryl Townsend was on the ground and he was crawling. But the, the official spotted it right away, and he didn't get too far. No. But a great job of trying to, to bluff it. Yeah, we well, got four anyway, and that's enough for our first down, and they'll move the yardsticks again. As they are now on the 38-yard line of the Warriors. Well, the Ravens wanted to set Temple coming out of the gate in the second half. And a fumble, and they're, I think they're going to call Simon's knee down on that one. So it'll be a loss of a yard or two. That's the correct call, and yes. the reason it's a good call is it, it protects the quarterback. Yeah. Well, he definitely went down on one knee to pick the ball up. There's yes, no did. question. So. And it's an instinctive thing. You don't want your quarterback going to the knee. But on the other hand, better that it's blowing dead and he gets a chance to play again rather than getting hit while he's on one knee. Yes. Simons back to pass, rolling out to his left, and he is caught from behind and sacked for a loss by number 10, Chris Paris. That was a great rush by the Mississauga team. That's a seven-yard loss. They were coming, and there were too many too many people coming for the number of blockers. He, he tried, It was like a little bootleg action, but it didn't fool anybody. So third down and 17 now for the Ravens. And the pitch is back to Townsend. Townsend getting to the outside, cuts it upfield, and gets across the 45. And that'll bring up a fourth down and a short cab ride for a first as they'll have to punt the ball away as the punting team comes onto the field. I'm not sure how, sure how short that cab ride is. Not my phone. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a cell phone up here going up. Yeah. You just looked at me like it was my phone. A great punt by Boshin all the way back to his own five-yard line. And we got a flag on the play back at the five. It's fumbled, and we'll see who gets it. The Ravens say they have it. Fumble on the play. It's out at the 18. The the I think they're going to say he was down. Well, the officials are... No, they're going to give it to the Ravens. Wow. Oh, I... Well, let's see. Ravens are celebrating, but a couple of the Warriors are saying that, no, they're going to keep the ball. So we'll have to wait. Uh, let's see. The official signaled that there was a push in the rear against Essex, but I think he just pointed the wrong way. Yeah. And It is Raven ball, It too. is the Raven ball. That's why the penalty is being declined by the Ravens. Quite obviously. Boy, that's a close one. I, uh, But, hey, we're up here. I can't see it from here. No. And I didn't have the glasses on it. Couldn't have seen it if I did. That was a 40-yard punt by Boshin, a 12-yard return before the fumble. As Brown gets it. Goes for... Two yards, so it'll be second down and eight. Jesse Brown's out of uh, Chatham McGregor. He's got great speed, but he's a young back, and he hasn't developed the moves of a Townsend yet. Key word in that, yet. I think it's a very important word in that yes. statement. Yes, he is, he is very young, and he will, will definitely develop. Townsend just bowls his way across the 10-yard line. As Darrell on that play, he was bound and determined he was going to get some yardage. And he just put the shoulder and the head down and pushed two defenders back. And that will bring up a third down and two from the 10-yard line. Well, old Mo right now is with the Ravens. Yes. They've Eight, got to cash in. 8.25 in the third quarter. Well, Townsend that time... Only gained a yard, but he slipped when he went to make his cut. 
And that's sometimes the danger on turf, and I think Coach Mills is going to go for it. He sure hasn't sent in the uh, field goal team. He wants a major. Yeah, they're sending in plays to quarterback Simon. Eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. It is 17-0 still in favor of the Mississauga Warriors. And fourth down and two. The Ravens are going for it. And Townsend is going to be stopped for a loss back at the 15-yard line. And it was led by number 55, Shane Smith. Well, they didn't fool anybody with that little misdirection. Well, all eyes from Mississauga, all 12 pairs of eyes out there were focused on Townsend. Yeah. No question. So the Ravens, after uh, putting a decent drive together, come up short once again inside the red zone. You only get down to the well so often. Boy, you sure want to come away with points of some kind. So a first and 10 from their own 15-yard line with 7.40 to go. And that will be a loss. As that was number 30, Ajay, the ball carrier, and he had nowhere to go. Seven-yard loss on the play to bring up second down and 17. Interesting, DBs have played well this year, and Brian McCurdy is leaving the program this week, and he's going to take up a role helping the defensive backs at Michigan State next week. We wish Brian well. On second down, the handoff to Hofferton, and Hofferton escapes the pack, and he's off to the races across midfield. Hofferton, one guy, Zeter, dies at the legs, can't get him, touchdown, Hofferton. And that is not what the doctor ordered for the Ravens, Ross, after coming away with nothing down in the red zone. To have a 102-yard run from the line of scrimmage by Hofferton. That's a great run by Hofferton. He had great blocking at the point of attack, and he took it the distance. The Ravens brought a lot of pressure, and when you bring pressure, usually you have only one or two defensive backs, and it's not enough because once you get beyond the linebackers, you're going. Well, that was a two-play drive that covered 95 yards. And the extra point by Chalakos is good to make the score 24 nothing. Well, that could well be, and I know it's not into the fourth quarter yet, but that could be the final nail in the coffin for the Ravens. Well, 24 nothing with 6.47 to go in the third quarter. And uh, I'll tell you, the way, you know, full, full marks to the uh, Warrior defense. They're making the plays when they have to. They sure are. And the thing is, they're, they're stingy. The Ravens are a running team. Yes. It's tough for a running team like the Ravens to play catch up. Yes. And they're going to be forced to put the ball in the air. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to air it out, no question. And then, you know, if we were uh, if we were calling a hockey game, then uh, we'd say, well, they'd be forced to open it up. So, you know, same thing. It's uh, it's going to it's going to be tough for a running team to do. Not saying that they can't, but uh, it's definitely a. Uh, uphill battle as it has been right from the opening kickoff but uh and it's a confidence factor the ravens are very oh. very proud of their defense and and in fairness um not all the points have come from the defense They're thinking of the first score for the warriors yes taking that his own 12 by brown brown gets to the outside cuts it back up and gets across his own 50 yard line well, you have to know there'll be no quit in a Glenn Mills coach team. No, a 39-yard return by Jesse Brown. 
and I, I didn't see any flags on the play. I didn't either. It's been a well-played game. Yeah, well-played, and I know we have gotten on the officials at times this season. We've been uh, hard on them, but I'll tell you, this, this has been a well-officiated game. They've let the players play. I haven't seen a better officiated game this year. No, I haven't either. No. And across midfield on first down. That was Brown again. Picks up four on the play. But unfortunately, as we as we observed just moments ago, Rick, when you're running the ball, it chews so much time off the clock. Yes. Down to 550 here in the third quarter. And Simon's pass is batted down at the line. Tried to quick out. But uh, I'm not sure who it was. I believe it was number 99, Meredith, that uh, got through and got the big mid up. In any event, that'll bring up a third down and six. Ball right at midfield. 527 and counting here in the third quarter. Simon's back to pass, rolling out. He's being chased from behind, gets the pass away, but well over the head of the intended receiver. That was number 85, Justin Govo. And that'll bring up fourth down, and it'll bring out Mike Boshin to do the punting. Well, as we observed, the Ravens are not noted for being a passing team. And they're going to have to pass. Yes. And a motion back at his own 41. And a bad snap and does get it away. And... Well, we'll see who, but the ball bounced, and I don't know who the last one to touch it was or not, but flags all over. It? It'll be academic, Rick. Because I don't even the, think uh, that one went 10 yards net. Well, that's, yeah, John next to me here says that's exactly what it went, 10 yards. No yards call. Yeah. Automatically, the receiving team's going to get the ball, and then they'll have a choice to take it where it is or move it up 15, and I think they'll take the 15 yards add-on. That's one, you know, sometimes the referees blow that one when it's short like that dead. Sometimes they don't. And it's a judgment call. There's nothing written in the rule book for the distance. And uh, the Ravens just didn't look up to see where the ball was. No. Although I suppose uh, in their defense, they, oh, don't, they don't expect a 10-yard punt. No, they don't. You know? <laughs> well, it started out with a bounce back to the punter. Exactly. And, and he was like, Boshin did a good job of actually getting it away pass up the middle is complete down to the 25 yard line as the reception was made by number 28 holden morales a 24 yard gain four and a half to go here in the third quarter mississauga is playing Full out right now, as well they should. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're not letting up. There's still, hey, there's still a lot of time left as quarterback Campbell is sacked back at the 32-yard line. Brought down by number 53, Mike Boshin. Six-yard loss. Helping there, I think, with Nick Skeets and Christian Meyer, the whole whole group of Ravens in there, whole flock, I guess we could say, of Ravens. A flock in on of that Ravens, one. yeah. A flock of Ravens. Yeah, and that backs them up to the 36-yard line of the Ravens. Second down and 20. And the pitch is back to 
Hofferton, and Hofferton gets a couple on the play. Actually, no, pardon me, that was number uh, 26, Tyrone Francois. I think Mississauga has done a fine job this afternoon of, of mixing it up among their backs, and they haven't focused on the Ravens have a tendency, and, and justifiably, to focus on Townsend. Right. But I think Mississauga has given the ball to more players and has kept the Ravens a little bit off guard. Yeah, and Campbell is going to go down again. Well, it didn't go down, but they called him in the grasp. And he was in the grasp of Nico Zvik, number 44. And so the official did Hamilton a favor by blowing it dead. I wouldn't want to be in his grasp. No. Not to mention there were a couple other Ravens that were coming in, and it'll give them credit for not giving the late hit because you know they wanted to. <laughs> Be interesting to see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any time right, a right. defensive player has a chance to put a lick on the quarterback, well, I'll tell you. But, you know, it's going to be interesting the way the Ravens play this. They're going to get the ball back. They'll probably get it back, I would say, maybe uh, outside their 20. And uh, be interesting to see what they decide to do with it. Yeah. Oh, and the punt bounces away from Iverson, and he's tackled in his own end zone. Well, he misplayed the ball, and he might have been better off knowing the rule in this league, just letting the ball roll into the end zone and then picking it up and running out to the one. Much as I don't like this rule, that's a place where it could have worked for you. Yeah. So a minus six on the return. A good friend of yours of mine wanted to make the trip today, Sean Haskett, who's the trainer for the AKO Fratman, but they had a game in Windsor today, and unfortunately the Fratman were on the losing end, 39-22 to to St. Leonard. And, uh, but I know Sean would like to be here. Sorry, we can't do a better job for you today, Sean. Yeah, as that pass to Ford... Oh, and uh, we got a penalty. Hey, we got flags all over the place now as Ford picked up uh, about 15 on the play, but we'll have to wait and see. As there's a flag in the backfield, Townsend was uh, wrapped up with, I believe it was number seven, Brian Coison. And uh, I don't know who's getting the flag on that, but both players Looks were. like Townsend uh, is. Yeah, I, I think Daryl might have tackled him in protecting uh, quarterback Ricky Simons. But uh, then out of the 50-yard line, there were two flags thrown. Well, by rule, the defensive penalty is being waved off and the hold is being assessed. That's just a rule. In, in America, they probably would be offsetting. But uh, in Canada... So, and there was an illegal block and a hold, both, both against on the Ravens. Ethics. Yeah. yeah. But they had to take one or the other, I think, and I think they opted to take the hold. Yeah. And Simons on the uh, quarterback draw gets it out to the 30. That'll bring up a uh, second down and 15. When I say opted to take it, I don't mean the Ravens opted. Mississauga had the choice. 120 left in the third quarter. 25 nothing in favor of the Mississauga Warriors. And the Ravens, well, we said they had an uphill battle. That hill is getting steeper and steeper as the clock winds down. Simon's pass is complete to number five, Brad Yole. And uh, Yol, we got a flag out at the 50-yard line. And Yol got back to the original line of scrimmage. Looks like John Curran made a bit of a late hit on the Mississauga player downfield. And I'm not sure if they got him for being illegally downfield or just rough play. Yeah, unnecessary roughness. So. Well, the Ravens, uh, 
They could have thrown a flag on him for being downfield. He was way downfield when that pass was thrown. Yeah. And it looks like Simon's on the other side. Rick is is being attended to by Mickey Tuller. Yes, he is. Which means we'll see Mike Hawkshaw. Yeah. Well, the, the Ravens, they, they do have uh, two young quarterbacks in Hawkshaw and Simons. As, as I mentioned before, Simons is only 17 and uh, Townsend only 18. So, you know, you, I think... Mean, Ricky's going to get better, and you can see that. He's, he's gotten better as the season's gone along, and, and I'm sure uh, all the um, Ravens' top brass have been uh, quite happy, and, and I know I've been uh, very impressed with the uh, progress of, of young Ricky Simons, and he's only going to get better as, as time goes along. The big complaint that, uh, or the big concern that the Ravens coaching staff has with Ricky is he takes too much on himself and tries to do too much, and he's got a strong supporting cast, let them help him out a little more. Exactly. But certainly the potential's there. He's a fine ball player, a fine young man. And uh, I, I think that uh, with this year's experience, this is his first year of varsity. Yes. That he, he should look forward to a real fine season next year. Oh, no question. And, and even in the backfield, uh, Kenny Sawyer, young Kenny Sawyer, he's only 17. So, I mean, the, 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 you know, the, the potential to have a very explosive offense again next season for the Ravens is there. There's no question about it. And uh, Hawkshaw and the keeper spins and then he is gang tackled out at the 30 yard line. But it's a, it's a good job to spin and pick up 10 yards on the play. So Hawkshaw did that very well. He did, didn't he? I'm not sure if he meant to give it off or if he meant to keep it. But whatever. He picked up some valuable yardage and took them out from the shadow of their own goal post. Yes. And it gives Boshin an opportunity to uh, knock the Warriors back a little further as they uh, face a, as the Ravens face a punting situation. Shadow of their own goal post? There is no shadow. It's in the sheet. There is no shadow. Well, <laughs> I know what you're <laughs> might be turned for the lights to come on pretty soon. Pretty soon. It's uh, as there's one streak of sun that goes diagonally from the near goal post, goal line marker to our right, to the far side of the field, to our left of the other. The two orange goal line markers are lit in the sun. And, well, we got flags all over the place. And going for the return up the sidelines and in for the score is number 30, Julius Ajay. But we've got a Raven, I think that's number 71, Nick Skeets, back out at the 50-yard line. And he is holding his ankle, and there's a flag about 10 feet away from him on the field. Well, it was a great return. It's a 46-yard return, a 34-yard punt. But John says there was a clip. And that's probably why Skeets is holding his ankle. Because a clip means low to the back of the leg. And uh, actually, Dr. Bob Gibb is out there as well as uh, trainer Mickey Tullett. So this, uh, this doesn't bode well for young Nick Skeets. Or no, pardon me, that's Dale Scott. So both uh, athletic therapists for the uh, for the Ravens are out there. and uh, I don't see uh, Dr. Gibb on the uh, side. No, line. I didn't think I saw him earlier. It was the first sure. uh, trip the Ravens have made that he hasn't been there. Yeah. Cause he, he may have been with the frat today because he's helping out with the frat as well. The okay. A.K.O. Fratman, and they played, as we mentioned earlier this afternoon. I think Skeets is going to be fine. He's got a tender ankle right now. Yeah. But that was a push in the uh, rear, a clip, as John Edwards suggested, and it backs Mississauga up, and the Ravens caught a break on that one. And uh, from what we understood uh, from John Bauer, the uh, AKO Fratman needed Dr. Gibb there. as uh, They had a big bench-clearing brawl with St. Leonard and a lot of ejections and uh, those two teams in that league hate each other. There's the rivalry there isn't uh, necessarily with the London Beefeaters. In, uh, I mean, it is, but not 
it's more with St. Leonard in that league than it is, you know, usually in any sport. It's London wins a rivalry, always has been. Uh, in this league, it seems to be... Uh, this is quite a rivalry building here as well. Uh, Mississauga and Essex, have, what's this, the third time they've met in the uh, championship game? Yeah. There's no love lost between the Pratt and London this year because Rob Bloomfield is the head coach of London, and uh, he spent some time in Windsor, so there's no love lost there. But um, those things can happen. But I will say this. Right now we have a moment. I, The Ravens organization is very pleased to see some of our players going on to both the AKO Frattman and the University of Windsor, and we were, wish all of those young men and those programs well as they begin their seasons. And uh, we hope the frat do very well and also the University of Windsor. Yep, second down and 12 for Mississauga as we are just starting the fourth quarter. And that pass is incomplete as that was number six, Jamie Shaw, who's in its uh, quarterback. And we're going to get a holding call against Mississauga on the play. And Ross, I would uh, like to uh, thank, of course, the uh, Windsor Spitfires for allowing us their soundboard. Otherwise, uh, we wouldn't be able to be bringing you this broadcast back home, although not too enjoyable for Ravens fans back home so far, but... Uh, in any event, it's, uh, you know, we, like I said, we'd like to thank the Spitfires for allowing us to, to do this and bring this into your living rooms tonight. We're getting uh, close to the time where you're starting to play for pride, where the Ravens are going to start playing for pride. Pass is incomplete to bring up a fourth down as uh, Jamie Shaw, he's coming in and throwing the ball right off the bat. And in will come kicker Dean Chalakos. Fourteen twenty-four to go here in the fourth quarter. The Ravens down twenty-five to nothing. And we got whistles here. Looks like a timeout called by Mississauga, Bernsey. Yeah, and while we have a timeout, uh, I personally would like to uh, thank the gentleman sitting on my extreme right here next to me, John Edwards, who has been doing some spotting, and uh, the stats that I have been bringing to you throughout the ball game have been coming from John, as uh, he has helped me out tremendously tonight, and it is, believe me, it is greatly appreciated, and also to uh, John Bauer, who helped put this all together this week as I... Uh, he was in here making sure the phone lines were going to, it was going to be doable for our uh, broadcast this evening. So thanks to both Johns, Edwards, and Bowers for making our job a lot easier, Ross. Absolutely. Iverson on a return. As Iverson gets out to the 49. But he mishandled the punt, and that's been the right Ravens' problem today. They're a little over, over anxious, and, and so they make little mistakes like that, and it Throws off the return, the blocking, and so the Ravens don't have position as, as field position as good as they would like, but certainly it's not bad. Yep, that was a 35-yard punt and a minus five-yard return. Hawkshaw in the shotgun, throws it out over the head of Dave Ford on the far sideline. Well, that's a long way to throw the ball, and boy, if you have a, 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 a safety coming up to jump that, it's going to be six the other way. Yes. Mike got a little bit too much air under that, and you want to throw that ball on a rope. He definitely has a strong arm, but uh, the inexperience, uh, as I say, and, then, and these younger players are only going to get better. This time he airs it up and throws it into double coverage to Dave Ford, and it's incomplete as it's batted down. That was Andrew James, number one, that knocked the ball away. But uh, not a, uh, not really a wise. That was an inexperienced pass by uh, young Hawkshaw. See a number of CIS coaches in the stands today. Just got away from Tom Arnott, head coach University of Guelph. They're getting ready to open camp next week, most of the program. Yeah. 
Hawkshaw back to pass again. And coming back to the ball and making a great catch at the 35-yard line was number 83, Brian Royal, who is a junior that's up for this game. And I'll tell you, there is a fine future with the Ravens by with for young uh, Royal. And we've got an injury timeout as number one, James, is down. That was a 25-yard catch by, actually, it was uh, Mark Curtis. He's 83. You know, I'm looking at the See, John, Ravens. I give you all this praise, and you give me the wrong number. <laughs> looking at the Ravens bench, and it is not a bench that has a lot of excitement on it, a lot of players standing with hands folded, hands on their hips. And you know when the Ravens have the ball, the number 28, Darrell Townsend, on the sideline, that they haven't got their game plan going into effect right now. No, you're right there, Ron. So the Warrior defense can just sit back and tee off on Hawkshaw. Yep. And he's been in the shotgun uh, formation since he came into the ball game. It remains that way. Airs it up downfield, and it's caught by number 80, Stefan Smith, down at the two-yard line. I think you'll see Townsend in now. A 33-yard reception by Stefan Smith from Hawkshaw. Puts the Ravens in scoring position, and if nothing else, that's a great the, catch. Take the goose egg off the board. Boy, you don't want the goose egg. No. Mississauga wants it to stay there. Essex doesn't. Yeah. Actually, that was good coverage back there by the Warriors. Oh. But uh, a great catch by Stefan Smith to jump on. He come back to the ball, jumped high in the air. We've got a flag on the play. As I believe that was uh, Spirides, number one, the ball carrier, and he's quite the load to bring down as well. Well, they've got some uh, horses back there. Well, well I think it might have been offside against uh, Mississauga. Offside yes. Mississauga. Moves the ball, I think, to the first one. Down. Yep, and a first down. So they've got Sparides in the backfield. Townsend up and over. Yep, and Townsend in for the touchdown. This all coming with 12.22 to go, a one-yard touchdown run by Daryl Townsend. Breaks the goose egg on the Ravens' side of the scoreboard. Is it too early to think of an onside kick? <laughs> uh, Johnny Bauer sitting in front of us is shaking his head. No, it's not too early. That was a six-play drive that covered 60 yards and 242 on the clock. The extra point by Kalala is good to make it 25 to seven. And with 12:22 to play, the, it's it's not definitely not too early for some trickery. I know Coach Mills was concerned coming into this game because they had to get so sky high to play the Steel City Ironman last week, and he was afraid that his players might take it uh, this week as somewhat anticlimactic. And certainly the Ravens, it might be suggested the Ravens have done just that by the same token. Mississauga has been full measure for the score that's up on the board. Yeah. But having said that, you know, it's been a great job once again by Glenn Mills and his entire staff. They start in, in January, mid-January, and they stay with this right till the end of August, well, the middle of August. And uh, Coach Mills and his staff have done just a great job, and you have to give them kudos. Yep. And I will say this, there is no quit on any kid wearing teal on that field. Oh, no, and they kick it. 
It goes 10 yards and tipped out of bounds by the Ravens, so they will get the ball. Great call by Coach Bauer. That's it. Coach Bauer sitting in front of us. He said, do it. They did it. And a smart play as well on, uh, I wasn't, I'm not sure it looked of like the it was number. number 80. Yeah, Ste- Stephon Smith. Stephon Smith. He didn't try to handle it. No, and he just wanted to knock it out of bounds. Take a chance on a fumble or anything. He just, he actually batted it back Almost over his swept head. It, swept he it swept out of bounds. His, yep, over his head. But a great kick by Colella. It had to go 10 yards, and it did just that. And the Ravens didn't go offside. No. And Mississauga, I think, is asking for a timeout, Rick. Yep. And that's what they're getting. A timeout with 12-12 to play here in the fourth quarter. 25-7 to in favor of Mississauga. And uh, a quick score by the Ravens here, Ross. Uh, although very optimistic. But, uh, hey, that's what we're, pardon me, that's what we're here for. So, you know, could make for a very interesting finish if they can uh, punch one in here quickly, though. Very quickly. Yes. They've got to have three scores. Well, we see the uh, as the sun going down to our right here at University Stadium on the ground of Wilfrid Laurier University. The jackets and the sweaters are coming out. It's starting to get a little cool out there. It's fall. Yeah, in the middle of August. The dog days have not been the dog days. They've been pretty chilly. Yep. Sergio Simmons, the ball carrier, and he'll pick up five on the play or four on the play. They get second down and six. Ravens are taking a lot of time, and they don't have a lot of time. Yeah, you'd think maybe they would send in two or three plays at a time. And they're going back up the middle again. And stopped right at the line of scrimmage was Simmons. Sean Meredith, number 99, in on the tackle. So a third down and five. You're right, Ross. They are taking a long time in the huddle. Too much time. They've taken 40. uh, Since the last play ended, they've taken almost 35 seconds. Inside handoff to Townsend, and he's going to be close to a first down. And we'll see if he gets a generous spot or not. But the Ravens should be getting into the huddle. They should be in the huddle right now. The play should be coming in. Yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna call it a first down. I thought maybe they were gonna call for the chains there for a minute, uh, Ross, but they didn't. They uh, that was a six-yard gain by Simmons to get the first down. I thought they were gonna call for the chains, but they went by eyesight. So, ball on the 44-yard line of the Warriors. Hawkshaw back to pass downfield, and it's tipped away by number 20, Elliot Richardson. And I'm a little confused on that one, Ross. Is he just he batted it like a volleyball set? I mean, well, he's, he's got he's he threw it into triple coverage, and if he puts it up in the air, there's a much better chance of a red shirt getting it than a teal shirt. And Hawkshaw didn't look off. Anyone, he looked uh, King Colder in the eye all the way down the field, and he had Stephen Smith wide open on this side. And if he had had his head looking both ways, single coverage on Stephen Smith. This time he goes to Smith, and Smith can't come up with it. Uh, just fell short. No, I meant uh, the, the defensive back there, Elliot Richardson. He batted at it like a volleyball set. Catch it. That was an easy pick. All he wanted to do was knock it down. I think I would have grabbed it. Yeah, I can see why he might have grabbed it. I, I think you make a real fine point. I think he just did something that he felt more more secure with at the, at the moment. Yeah. 
But I, you know, well, I, it's easier to the, say from up here. The you Raven, know. Ravens seem to have either a long passing game or, or no passing game. All they've got to do is pick up 10 yards. They yeah. don't have to throw it way, way out there. Now they're in a run situation. Now it's going to be a fourth down. I, I think it would be nice if they had some type of package where they can pick up seven or eight yards of toss, send someone deep, clear out, come underneath it. You don't have to hit the home run ball every time. You no, know, Spirit, just lost two on that run. So fourth down and 12, the Ravens will go for it. They, they have no choice with 925 Gotta remaining. They have to. But all they need to do is pick up. And look at Mississauga, only rushing yards. three. And a great pitch and catch. That's a great job. Wow, what a catch by number 83, Mark Curtis. And I'll tell you, Hawkshaw there threw into double coverage, but he was he able to split th- the double coverage. He was able to thread the needle on that wow. one, and that was a great throw. That went for 32 yards. And all the way down to the 15-yard line. Hawkshaw passing into the end zone. And that time it's picked off in the end zone by number 36, the Jai Coley. But Hawkshaw hasn't had a lot of experience throwing. And he's got to recognize that he's throwing into five. There are five red shirts, three teal shirts. You can't throw into that many. No. And... He threw over the teal shirts into the red shirts. And, just... and again, I, I, and I'm not going to beat it to death, obviously, but you've got to have a short passing game to go with yeah. your, your deep passing game. It's fine to stretch the field vertically, but that's not a high percentage pass that he threw, and unfortunately it's coming back the other way. Yep. Yeah. So the ball on the 20-yard line. The Warriors take over after the interception. And no gain on that carry. That was Ajay, number 30, Julius Ajay. Well, they're going to mark it about a half a yard. So it will be... Second down, and we'll call it nine. And the Warriors well in control here with eight minutes to go in the ball game, up 25 to seven. Number 26, Tyrone Francois fumbles, and into the end zone is Nico Schwick. Number 44. He just took it right out of the arms of the, t- the running back. Mississauga the running back stopped. Yeah, Mississauga's complaining, saying he was down. But it's a 23-yard fumble recovery into the end zone, and I didn't hear any whistles either. I don't think it was a fumble recovery, Rick. He just it stole just it. hit the ground. He just stole it right out of his arms and ran it in. Wow. What a turn of events here. And uh, I'll tell you, the uh, Mississauga bench isn't that Oh, that no, they are really upset. Kalala's extra point is good to make it 25 to 14. And uh, I'll tell you, just like that, with 7.50 to go in the fourth quarter, it's, an 11 point it's only 11 points now. But, I, I, again, Ross, like you said, a lot of the, the – Maybe the, the Hall of Fame quarterbacks, Joe Montana, Dan Marino, uh, you know, Elway. The list goes on. 10 yards, 15 yards at a time. Down, March it downfield. Well, that's the West Coast offense you know, that they've used, and, it, and it's been effective. But, you know, take what they give you. They've, they're, yeah. they've got deep coverage. They're throwing into deep coverage. Yeah. Come underneath it once in a while. It's nothing the matter with throwing into it occasionally. But if you continue to do it, they're just going to drop guys. And they've got more guys there than you've got. Doesn't help catch the ball. I think we're going to see another onside kick. Oh, yes. Coach Burns, are you going to do that? I would. Okay. Why not? Coach Edwards, are you going to go onside? Coach Bauer? Coach Bauer's not going to do it. Oh, no. This time he says no. 
That was Francois' second fumble. At least that's how it'll go in the books. <laughs> and, oh, Coach Bauer is right as they boom it. Let's just say it was. And it goes all the way back to the two-yard line, and that's number two, Jeffrey Charlton. And Charlton only gets to the 10, but we've got flags all over the place on the uh, middle of the field on the far sideline. So uh, interesting, 63-yard kick and a 13-yard return. I guess that'll teach us to uh, doubt Coach Bauer there. You got the headsets on with Coach Mills down there, Johnny, or what? Boy, he's calling it. Just want you to know I didn't make a call. No, you didn't. I, no, you I, asked the question I that side. I waited to see which side, would, <laughs> what, what would happen. So I'll jump to the side of the fence that says, kick it deep. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you meant to say earlier, but I cut you off, right? Wait, absolutely. Yeah. I would have said that. <laughs> That's a great call by John Bauer. At least the Ravens, if nothing else, Rick, are making it respectable. Yeah. Well, offsetting calls. And it will be first down Mississauga. And right up the middle. They're grabbing the ball again. Might as well see if they can, you know. They definitely need the ball back with 7:20 to go, because you know Mississauga is going to run, because they're going to want to want you know run the clock down. But you know something? I think the Ravens can't focus just on stripping. Make the stop first. Oh, definitely. Make the stop. Yeah, yeah, that was Hofford in, and, and he's had a heck of a game here tonight. You don't want to give up five yards on each play. No. Second down and five from their own 14-yard line. And Hofferton gets the ball. And he's going to go down for a loss. And I'll tell you, what the Ravens did on that play there is two Ravens grabbed Hofferton and number 44, Nico Schwick, who took it away the last time, he went for the ball. So three of them, two grabbed Hofford in to make sure he didn't go anywhere. And Schwick come in and he had nothing on his mind but the ball. But Hofford in held on. He did lose two yards on the play, but uh, he did hold on. 6-12 to go here in the fourth quarter. And this is turning into a very, very interesting ending. The pitch is back to Hofford in and Hofford in is going to lose some more yards. No, he's still on his feet. Finally brought down. Back at the line of scrimmage, and that'll bring up a fourth down and five. I thought Hofferton was going to lose some more yardage, but I'll tell you, he, he's had a heck of a game, and he turned something out of nothing. If I were Coach John Bins, I think I'd bring pressure. One guy deep, bring pressure, go for the block. Well, Coach Bauer up here has been right in the last two calls. Well, Coach Bauer, you bring in the house? Oh, definitely, he says. No question about it. Chalakos. And I think they're going to call a timeout. That's yes. Mississauga's second timeout. Yep. Well, that, that helps uh, Essex. It stops the clock. Yeah. But Mississauga also wants to make sure everybody's set. And I don't think they were. Chilakos back on his own. He's going to go to safety. Oh, he is, too. He's just going to trot on out the back of the end zone and give up the safety. And that makes the score 25 to 16. But the Ravens do get the ball back. And they do get the ball, yes. (laughs) 
Actually, that I think that's a smart play on Mississauga's part. Oh, I do too. Give up the two points. I yeah. do too. Why risk having a block? Why risk having the Ravens have the ball deep in the territory? Yep. In, in Warrior territory, they're going to kick it from the 35-yard line, and that's going to put the Ravens back a little bit. And I think uh, Coach Bauer here, he's nodding his head saying, oh, he wouldn't have. He would have kicked it. Oh, okay. I don't know. Your, your record's 2-2 two and two now. Very interesting. Well, the Ravens now seem to have a little bit of life on the bench, but... Uh, well, the intensity certainly has picked up on both sides. Both sides, yes. Whether it will be too little, too late, we'll find out in 5 minutes and 14 seconds. But not to go back to the opening play, but you see how devastating that opening touchdown was. Yes. And they kick the ball out of bounds. So that will be a penalty as it goes out at the 28-yard line. And the Ravens will probably put it into play at the 35, the 40-yard line, 50-yard line. The 50-yard line. Yes, line. the 50-yard line. Well, I started out at 35, went to 40, 40. Now I'm up to 50. You want to try midfield? I'd go for it. I would. But yeah. I think we're probably going to have to settle for 50. It's called an illegal procedure on the kickoff. So the Ravens do have good field position, certainly. Yes, they do. But they? they can't waste a lot of time, and they're already at the line of scrimmage ready to go. So first down, Ravens with 5.14 to go in the fourth quarter. They're down by nine. And they have the ball at the 50-yard line. Hawkshaw, back to pass, up the middle of the field. Oh, and I'll tell you, where was the penalty call there? Dave Ford is pleading with the referee as he got clothesline, cutting across the middle by number 11, Terry Chempy. And well, I think there's the fans, a lot of booing in the stands right now, I'll tell you, and I, with good reason. I think the fans were looking for a penalty, Rick, but uh, the official must have felt that he tripped over the legs of the defender. Yeah, but then you'd fall forward. He fell backwards. He got flat. Oh, we got flags all over the place as the pass is caught on the far sideline. And more flags. That probably is going to be a face mask, but I don't know what's going to happen back here. It's getting nasty down there on, in the trenches, I'll tell you. That was an 11-yard pass. Well, there are all sorts of flags in the field. I think the Ravens initially were called for a hold. That was James Luciani with the 11 yard catch. But we'll have to wait and see because, like I say, there, there were flags down where he was tackled. There were flags in the backfield. I'm surprised the officials are talking and letting Marco Morano stay in close proximity. They usually chase the players away. Face mask against Warriors. Roughing the passer against the Warriors. Holding against the Ravens. Well, I think they wipe out the hold. Well, they're moving the ball all the way up to the 40-yard line. So, 40-yard line of Mississauga. So that ends a, it's a 20-yard gain, as it turns out. Because the ball started at the 50 of the Ravens. And now is on the 40 of the Warriors. So, well, emotions are running high right now, and it's going to be up to the officials who have done a good job today. To they have. In check. Yep, they have. They have. No question. 4:48 to go here in the fourth quarter, and the momentum has swung in favor of the Ravens. But time is now their enemy. Yes. Hawkshaw in the shotgun. Gives a short little pass, and it's complete to number 24, Pat Zeter. Or no, pardon me. To Townsend, 28. 
Tackle was made by number 40, Cordy Phillips. Boy, I'd have him at the line. This is this is where you want to have a, an on the ball type offense. Yeah. And they've wasted about 14 seconds right now that they don't have to waste. Huddling up. Yeah. Three yard gain on that pass play. And uh, up the middle, still on his feet, and still going all the way down to the 12 yard line. Was Jesse Brown, number 25. That took everybody in the house by surprise. And it was a great call. So now the Ravens threatening on the Warrior 12 yard line, 342 and counting. The Ravens with three wide out here on the near side. Inside handoff, Brown once again. And he gets down to the six, but we've got a penalty flag down. Brown the ball carrier, flag on the five. No flag, waving nope. it off. They're waving it off. Second down. Waving the flag off, second down and up. So it'll be second down and six from the seven-yard line. So we'll see what the Ravens do here. As time is ticking away. And they're going to have to do something in a hurry here. Hawkshaw pitches it back to Townsend, tries to cut back up the middle, and he's brought down. Back at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard gain at at best. Well, we're down to the three-minute warning, I think. Yep. 2.59 showing on the clock. 25-16 in favor of the Warriors. And we're in for a heck of a finish here, Ross. But the Ravens, they have to punch it in on the next, at least the next couple, within the next couple plays. They you have know, to. And I'm impressed with the uh, offensive calls coming from the Ravens coaching staff this series. Yep, Brown up the middle. And will he get enough surge for a first down? We'll have to wait and see as he's stacked up inside the five. He had to get down to pretty much the two-yard line. And I think they're going to mark it at the three. So he might be just about a yard short. Essex will probably go right now with a strong. And that means two lead blocks, two lead uh, backs. Blocking probably for Townsend. Well, they've got uh, Sparides coming in. Little confusion on the Ravens right now. 